But what's the future of our energy supply? What's the future of the planet? Is it melting down? What's the future of our independence from foreign oil, particularly from more foreign oil coming from countries that tend to uh, support people who like to do things like fly airplanes into buildings. Elizabeth A. Jones is with us, Elizabeth Ames Jones. She is the Texas Railroad Commissioner, which has nothing to do with railroads. The Railroad Commissioner is in charge of oil, gas, and fuel in that state. She's running for the U.S. Senate as a Republican from Texas. Jones for Texas.com is her website. Elizabeth, welcome to the program. Tom, it's great to hear your voice, and thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for coming on the program. I'm, um, uh, yeah. First of all, you're, you're running for U.S. Senate from Texas. Who's, who are you trying to unseat? Well, I'm, you know, that is a ways down the road because we've got a, a Senator, uh, Kay Hutchison, whose term is up in 2012, and so, yes, uh, I will be running for that seat, but... Or you know, she, I've got the you, greatest job in the world here in Texas until that time comes. Right. Um, but you do have a campaign website up, you I know, Jones, do, yes. jonesfortexas.com. Is if, if she succeeds in, in beating Rick Perry, she's oh, running no, against no, Rick Perry. No, that's all done. That's all that's done. That's all over. And, and, and Governor Rick Perry is, is going to be on the, the ballot primary? for a November election. Uh, okay, see, so I've been out, out, out of touch of, with Texas politics. That, yeah, well, listen, if you even live here, it's hard to follow. <laughs> that, <laughs> okay. that, you're doing pretty good for being in Oregon, but that's all been been taken care of. But, you know, I learned from, even as a, as, as a little girl, that you just, you're prepared for anything that comes your way. So uh, uh, that's my plan. So you're, you're planning on, on 2012. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about oil then. Let's talk yeah, about energy great, policy I, I, in the United States. It was States. great you, to see you. and, and I, Yeah, I you and I were on a panel a couple of weeks ago and, yes. and, and uh, had some of this discussion. ExxonMobil in 2008 earned $45.2 billion dollars. More profit over the last yeah. two years. They've earned more profit That's than any, I, I any corporation in U.S. history. They're getting uh, $13 billion in taxpayer-funded giveaways over the next 10 years. Um, somehow this, this just stinks. They get $13 billion in subsidies, write-offs, and payoffs from us. They earn a $45 billion profit. They donate $1.8 million. Okay, uh, to the well, Bush Cheney well, campaign, yeah, yeah. and then they get 104 okay. million dollars in campaign contributions to other candidates. It, it, the influence of big oil it seems particularly pervasive in Texas. Well, what are you doing I mean, about it? Well, let, you know, and that is what is such a, a myth about big oil because. Really, the oil and gas industry is made up of small and medium, and there are some large independents, too. And it is a fascinating and very complex sort of structure. I wish every class could use this kind of industry as a way to teach economics, because there's so, you've got global economics, you've got weather that comes into prices, you've got consumption, you've got uh, uh, supply and demand. But anyway, uh, I don't know about the, the Exxon Mobil, and, and I have heard that number before. I also think it's important when you look at that uh, to, to see what it, exactly they are paying in taxes, and a lot of the definition of what a subsidy is. Sometimes what a subsidy is is it's just you know maybe a royalty when you go out and you're drilling in the outer continental shelf the federal government basically has a deal to incentivize people to go drill out there right. sometime you know it's like sort of a if you were getting into a a deal an operating agreement well it's like incentivizing me to buy property. a house by saying that I'll, I'll get a tax uh, deduction on my mortgage well, in, let me in tell you, you know but, I, but yeah we're seeing a lot of that aren't we but but let's let's you know to take this to the larger yeah. picture the oil companies in the United States have gotten a free ride ever since uh, Colonel Drake drilled his his first oh. oil well back in 1865 in Titusville Pennsylvania in as much as they produce extraordinary externalities you know from from the river that caught the Cuyahoga River catching on fire to Lake Erie being dead for some time yeah, to right. to uh, right now in the United States estimates of at least 10,000 cancers a year around this country hundreds of thousands of cases of asthma as a direct consequence of auto exhaust and in particular diesel exhaust not to mention uh, you know, mercury now granted most of the mercury comes from from uh, that's in our rivers and our water comes from uh, okay. coal-fired power plants rather than yeah, oil-fired power plants but but there, are, but there are a lot of nasty things that are that are the product 
And this is, and we haven't even talked about global warming. There's still a lot of nasty externalities, and the oil industry is not paying Whoa. one damn penny for any of this. In other countries, they tax the oil companies and say, we're going to use that money to pay for those externalities. We're going to use that money to pay for all those asthmatic kids. We're going to use that money to pay for treating those cancers. Why not in the United States? Well, I have to respectfully disagree with the, the notion that all of these are scientifically proven. I don't know about all of the cancers that have caused from what, but I definitely think that as Americans, we always want to be finding a better way to do things. And so, I, But we are going to need hydrocarbons. You were talking about cars and, and gasoline, and, of course, we've talked about in that panel the potential to replace that with natural gas to cut down on the use of gasoline from refined crude right, oil. Which is far, far less people, toxic. The what? Which is far less toxic. But it, <laughs> well, it's, it's not toxic at all. Well, it's, 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 right uh, it's still producing carbon dioxide, and, and which is a whole separate, like I said, we, we can talk about global warming separately, but, yeah. but I'm just talking about the, the simple externalities that, and, and, and here's the other one. We're spending, we have the largest military in the world. It, well, we spend more on our military than every other country on Earth combined. And one of the major things that our military does is it protects our oil lanes. Now, why, you know, if... if the stability if, in the Middle East, is right. certainly, yeah. And, 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 and uh, you know, Jimmy Carter was pretty outspoken about, you know, this, is, this, this will not stand. We're, we're, we're never going to import more, more oil than we have in the past. And, 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 you know, and a fine thing it was, I think. And, 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 and yet, you know, Reagan blew up his programs, and, and here we are now. We're importing well, more than know, twice I, as much oil as we were when Jimmy Carter was yeah, president. Yeah. Well, I, I think some of these, the, the, you know, things are sort of... Fit in a simplistic way that, that you are describing them, and I've got to suggest that when you peel away the onions and you get to the dynamic modeling of the costs and everything regarding taxes on big oil and, or, or rather, what they their profits, there's that story. Now, here's let's talk about security in the Middle East. There is no doubt that our our military is over there making sure that that the balance of power is is. Uh, uh, cre- is is creating a safety zone, a buffer zone for America, and actually, I do believe that the responsible production of our own hydrocarbons here at home and in the outer continental shelf, and there are other countries where they are finding mm-hmm. reserves offshore in Brazil, countries who are our friends, and even some countries in the Middle East who do who we do do business with. I'm all for trading with people who are our friends, but gosh, I hate to be so dependent on imports from, and some of that does come from places who are not, do not have our best interests at heart. I hate that. And I, I don't know, Tom, I mean, we're the next generation, and, you know, why can't we find a way to ensure that we responsibly drill here when we can, and that's our bridge to the future. Why can't we find a way to responsibly capture the, 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 uh, yeah. the, the hundreds of thousands of gigawatts of solar power that are here You're, in the United I, States? Listen, I am all, you know, and ideally, that's the thing about, I, I feel like really, you know, and I hear you, and, and I, I don't have time to, to tell you no, we everything. Have, we have a little show. less than a minute left, actually. I behave okay. But, you know, you could put solar panels on top of rooftops for, for generating even, you know, small generation plants for buildings. Uh, mm. And I think it is so great that we are going to be moving in that direction. But I do not believe that it is realistic or even practical, particularly in today's economy, that we throw hydrocarbons under the bus, regardless on what, you, you know, you're feeling about, you know, the generation of them. And, and of course, it's, it, as it moves forward, we'll get cleaner and cleaner burning to things like natural gas. But nevertheless, it's a great bridge to the future. And that's what I like to... Well, we definitely we definitely have to have a transition if if we're going to move to renewables, yeah. and and that's a good first step. Elizabeth Ames well, thank Jones, you so Jones, much, Tom. you're welcome. Jones for Texas dot com is her campaign website, and Elizabeth Jones, our, the Texas Railroad Commissioner. Thanks for dropping by today. Thanks very much. Talk to you soon. Good talking with you.